helping make your life easier. Moms Every Day. Welcome back to Moms Every Day, everyone. Thanks for joining us. We're here now with Dr. Nicholas Fan, who is a neurosurgeon. We appreciate you being here with us. Thank you for having me. All right, so today we're talking about something that you particularly focus on, and that's neurotrauma. So for our viewers out there, what is that? What is that that you deal with? Well, particularly my interest is in traumatic brain injury and spinal cord injury, and um, I have uh, clinical and academic interests, and uh, my research background is, is focusing on, on patients with severe brain injury and how we treat them. So not just the surgery part, but also so uh, the secondary type of injuries that they can get in intensive care unit. So we try to prevent them from having these secondary injuries, mm -hmm. mostly like low oxygenation or low blood pressure, which can make their brain injury worse. Dr. Fan, what type of patients do you most often see? Or what cases do you, do you see most often? Like ur urgently, uh, we see a lot of trauma. So like we do see brain injuries and spine injuries. Mm -hmm. These are coming now. Not everybody with a spine injury has a neurological injury, uh, but a lot of patients with have a spinal cord colon fractures without neurological injuries sure. and some patients can have a spinal cord injury without a spinal column injury um, and that's on the on on an emergency basis in the clinic as an outpatient we see a lot of spinal problems like um, degenerative spine problems mm -hmm. like stenosis or in the neck and the lumbar spine dr fan from from your experience what are the best ways to try and prevent some of the types of injuries that you see. What should we be doing? Right. Well, a lot of it is injury prevention, right? So, so a lot of the trauma pe population is in young uh, men, mm -hmm. and uh, these are things that probably won't change, you know, uh, regardless of what we do. But um, things like for cycling, wearing a helmet is important. Um, for uh, for driving, uh, wearing your seat, seat belt is important. Mm -hmm. What I've seen here in the sense of one month since I started working, there's a lot of ATV accidents. So I've seen uh, so far uh, three young uh, women who had uh, who suffered uh, severe injuries after wow. uh, ATV accidents. Um, so it seems to be like a, a common thing in the area here, um, and that's actually very difficult to control because they're young adults who sometimes sure. have risky behavior, sure. and these vehicles are not protected. But like you said, you know, it's the little things that we need to do: be wearing a helmet, wear your seatbelt, just those safety measures that we can take. So, uh, what type of training goes into? becoming a neurosurgeon. What, what is your background? Uh, myself, uh, I did uh, after high school, I did uh, two years of college and then there's uh, five years of med school and my residency was 10 years because I spent five years doing research and then after that I did two years of fellowship and before I started working. Okay, Dr. Fan, I have to ask because I see that you've actually gone through training in Canada and mm -hmm. California, some significant training. So, you know, what brought you to the Marshall School of Medicine in the Huntington area? Why our area? Yeah, so I was looking for um, a position where there was a lot of uh, opportunities to expand my clinical practice. So, so I'm what you would call a mid-career uh, surgeon, so I've already given gain some experience and I'm looking to expa expand mm -hmm. uh, my field and um, Marshall University and Cabell Hostel uh, had the best mix of, uh, of opportunity for that so they, had a, they have a good group of neurosurgeons uh, who work well together and there's ample opportunity for, for a surgeon to, to have a busy clinical practice which was uh, as I was looking for and uh, my uh, she's a scientist and then Marshall University offered her a, a good position as well so uh, we both decided it was the best place for both of us. A perfect fit? Yes. All right well Dr. Fain we want to ask you too uh, what types of procedures do you use to to treat these neurotrauma cases that you see or that, so, that you typically so use? So for, uh, for traumatic brain injury uh, in terms of surgery a lot of it is a decompressive type of surgery so some patients have um, a brain swelling or that blood loss inside their brain or on, on, on the outside of the brain pushing on it and mm -hmm. what we do is that we do a large opening which looks like a question mark and we remove a large piece of skull um, and to let, essentially let the brain swell out. And in some patients who don't need surgery, we can insert little monitors inside their brain to measure uh, the intracranial pressure and we can also measure the oxygenation and sometimes there's special monitors to measure the blood flow across the brain. Interesting. Um, and a lot of this is done in the intensive care unit. Uh, for spinal injuries, um, most patients don't need surgery but when they do, uh, the majority of them need a fixation procedure as essentially putting screws and rods to hold their spine together. And you do a lot of extensive surgery too so I'm assuming it takes a lot longer to heal for these? Yes right so so uh, 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 a traumatic brain injury is 
especially a severe one, can take uh, up to two years to recover. And some patients come in like completely comatose and they take weeks to wake up. And sometimes, you know, especially if you don't see them in long-term follow-up, you, you tend to feel that they may not do well, but uh, six months later, they come back and walk in your office. Well, Dr. Fan, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. And thank you me. all at home for joining us today for Moms Every Day. Hope you have a great day, everyone. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.